if you continue to wait for the right time, you will always be waiting. Always be waiting. So what we mean by this is there's never going to be a perfect time. And you have to jump right into it, basically. That's what I've learned investing in real estate that, you know, I had all these thoughts of maybe I need X amount of capital. Maybe I need uh, for it to be exactly in this city or this town. I need it to be close to me or whatever. But the reality is you just have to find one that you can work with and go from there. But Kirby, what do you got? Remember when you started looking at real estate? Alex Alex thought that he was going to uh, get a rental property and then go beat people up if they didn't pay him his rent. So he wanted it like right next door to him. And it was, it was the funniest thing ever. <laughs> but um, but the thing is, if somebody, and this is my philosophy, I'm not saying it's Alex's philosophy. If somebody's right next door to you or 10 miles away from you, if they're not going to pay the rent, they're not going to pay the rent. And you got to go through the processes, no matter how close you are to them. I mean, do it give you a better comfort level to be at home? I mean, so you can see it every day. Yeah, it may give you a comfort level. Um, but I got properties that's close to me, and I don't see them. <laughs> I don't even look at them. Uh, unless I'm just happy to go down that road and go, oh, yeah, I got properties right there. Um but waiting for the right time, if I waited for the right time, I'm be honest with you, I, if I just said, oh, when the right time come, I'm going to do it. Um, I still be broke. And I ain't talking about, you know, broke living paycheck to paycheck. I mean, broke, broke, cup in hand. Hey, can you got some spare change? Um, the thing is, and my philosophy is execute. If you want to learn how to fly a plane, just execute. I ain't mean execute, jump in a plane and take off. I mean, just start getting the building blocks there. I'm not saying have analysis paralysis either on anything. And that means people think because they read 100 books, they're doing something. No, they have to actually put it into action. And so we can go back with the, the flying the plane analogy. If you want to fly a plane, you want to, you know, maybe read some books on, you know, the very basics and then or where to apply to the school, I mean, the short school to learn how to fly and then apply. Not, oh, you need to know every single detail about a plane before you can ever even actually start the process. And that's what a lot of people do. They think that they need to know every single nuance that's going on. When it comes to investing, you can listen to the gurus, you can go to workshops and everything. Mistakes are still going to happen. The thing that, you know, looking at YouTube channels or going to, you know, investor courses and things like that, it will eliminate mistakes that's already been done if you're listening to what the teacher's providing or wherever you get your form of medium is providing. It will just limit those mistakes and it won't be as catastrophic because you have somebody to lean on that's been in those situations that can help you out in that situation. But mistakes will still happen. Best believe mistakes will. It was, it's no... This thing as a perfect investor, not Warren Buffett, not Benjamin Graham, and those are my two favorites, not Dave Ramsey. Nobody is a perfect investor. Mistakes are going to happen. But the thing is, is if you're waiting for that big golden moment, the big aha moment that uh, all these things, got the stars got to be aligned right, uh, you got to hit the Powerball or whatever just to start, you don't. I mean, literally, I started... I started investing $50 a month. That was back when, you know, when you can invest $50 a month in a mutual fund. But that's where I started at. I started at $50 a month and I just kept grinding. And then I went from there and I and I was barely, I was just, I was hurting. That $50 a month, that was equal to the discretionary funds that I had, you know. I, I mean, that was, you know, all my money went towards paying bills, paying bills, paying bills. But I told myself, I have to, start with something so i'm just plugging 50 dollars away now you know it costs a little bit more to get in the mutual fund so you need to maybe just start plugging away and putting the money into that investment account so it's just out of your realm and then once you get to the number the minimum initial investment that you have to make for any investment i'm just talking about in mutual funds just for instance 
then you take that money out of the brokerage account and then put it into the fund or the ETF or what have you. But you just have to start. And then my grind, my focus was this before I even thought about entrepreneurship was, you know, working hard, you know, collecting over time, you know, getting promotions. And then every dollar that I made over the bare minimum standard of living went towards investing, 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 plugging away. And then you look up, you know, a couple of years later, well, for me, it was like three years later, you know, good timing. I got lucky on the timing that I started, you know, right after the financial crisis. But I'm, I'm plugging away, plugging away every dime extra going into there. Then you look up and you got 100000 Then you keep getting better jobs. And then now it's 200000 300000 But if I never took that initiative and waited for the right time, oh, maybe when I get the next promotion, then I'll start. Maybe if uh, my mom or my grandma give me some money for Christmas, then I'll start. The onus is on you. Only person that cares about your money is you. So it's up to you to make sure your future is set. I mean, your significant other cares about it. Your your family and friends are like, oh man, I care about you. But at the end of the day, it's survival of the fittest. And the fittest is the person who invests now in whatever medium you choose to invest in, but invest now and run it for the long term to take care of your financial future when you get older. Because when you get older, all your friends and family, they're not going to invest and they ain't going to have no money to take care of you. And if you want to be sleeping on your kid's couch when you're in your elder years and your kid's telling you what to do, instead of, you know, you being a parent, then set, you can set yourself up for that. But the reason why you're setting yourself up for being a, being a child again in your kid's home is because you failed to just start. Just start. Now, Alex, I'll get off my soapbox now. What you got? Yeah, I remember after the first property I'd gotten you you had said well because I had I was I had told you I was like well I think now what I'm gonna do is save until I get a hundred thousand so I have a good enough amount of capital you know in some reserves and everything to to get the next one I was like so I think I'll wait like a year from from now or I'll wait until what what did I say 2024 or something and then you're like, so if there's good deals, you're just going to let them pass you by. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, so there's some logic to that. And the thing is like, you know, on the following two deals, I went into them with no more than 40,000 in capital each. And so it was just a matter of looking what was looking for what was in my range or looking at what was in my range and making a deal work with what I had. And obviously it takes more work. It's, you know, it's probably not as easy as saying, oh, there's a $80,000 property in Georgia. I've got 300 grand. I'll just pay cash. But, you know, it's a matter of, okay, I've got to use what I got and figure it out. And so instead of just waiting for that perfect time in my eyes, which was having a hundred grand or whatever, I just, was looking every day to see if I could apply what I had to something that was out there. And then I had gotten, you know, two more properties. And so with, you know, with doing that, I, you know, I learned that you just have to jump into it. You just have to force yourself to do it. And wait one second. Now understand then just now you think of this. Let's, let's, let's rewind that back. Let's think of it. So you bought your first property. Right. And he said, you're going to buy another one in 2020, 2024. We're not even 2024 yet. So now just imagine, you think about it. Just imagine if you bought that property and now you're still waiting. Till to this day, what would you feel like? Now I know what you did. What would you feel like? Yeah, I felt like I failed. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, you, you have to create that right time. It's not the, the real estate guy's not going to come. And when I was saying, if it's if it's good deals, you just go let them pass you up. Is nobody is waiting for the real estate world and the real estate guides or the investment guys is not sitting here saying, "Oh, we're just gonna wait till Alex come up with that money, then we're gonna start giving out deals." <laughs> They're not gonna do it. Right. You gotta find a way to make the deal. You gotta find a way to make the deal. You gotta find a way to dig and grunt your lifestyle up and live below your means to invest in the stock market. If you want to be in a business, 
You got to find the capital to get there to make that happen. It's not like we talk about in, in the stock market. It's not about timing the market. It's time in the market. You just got to get started and let it let it work out for you. But if you're waiting for a perfect time, and as this you know, example Alan just put up there, you'll be sitting here waiting, 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 waiting. And then now let's think of the other fact with your example is now you saved up your hundred thousand and then 2024 arrived. Let's just say we didn't get this effect. Let's just say we didn't get this effect of higher interest rates. Yeah, of course, we those, but higher interest rates, and then the interest rates started dropping. So that hundred thousand dollars, you would need more capital and more capital, and more capital, because the price of the homes are going to go up. Then what you gonna say? Oh, I guess I got to get another fifty thousand. The world right. is not waiting on you. You better take the bull by the horns and ride it to the wheels fall off, because. If you waiting on somebody to do it for you, it ain't gonna happen. But sorry, Alex, just had to point out that fact that you uh, got three or four more properties in that time you still waiting by your second. <laughs> yeah, no, and that's the thing is you have to just jump into it. I think. I mean, obviously, I jumped into it because you had given me that advice. But the reality is, like, if I could have had the same mentality, you know, that first property that I found. Uh, you know, just running the quick numbers on it. It was forty five thousand dollars. I had I think I had just that forty five thousand. And I was like, well, I got to make, you know, I got to do repairs. I got to do whatever, you know, closing costs, stuff like that. And then you were the one that told me you were like, well, people are hurting right now. I was like and you were like, just make a disrespectful offer. See what they do. And I was like, so then I offered thirty thousand and then they counted with thirty two five and I couldn't believe it. And so, like, you you never know unless you try. You know, I thought from 45 to 30, I mean, that's, how much is that? That's like a 33% drop, right? So I'm asking this guy. You went to private school. <laughs> <laughs> I'm asking this guy to come down 33%. So I'm thinking, like, that's insane. Like, he's not going to do it. But then he didn't counter with, hey, what about... 40 you know he countered with 32 five that's like right there and i'm like okay yeah so then that worked you know but i would have never known that he was willing to actually go that low unless i had just made an offer and tried and it was funny because it was the same day it was the same day that i saw the property is the same day that i called and made the offer and the same day that they accepted it so um you know it's just a matter of just doing it just putting your yourself out there because a lot of people they like to just talk about Oh, I want to do this. I'd like to do this. And I mean, I was one of those people, you know, but they, 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 they're too focused or not even focused. They're too involved with fantasizing something rather than actually taking action and doing something. I mean, I know someone to this day that has been talking about, oh, they want to buy a house for the last seven, eight years and they still haven't done it, you know, it, and, and, they went from, oh, I want to buy a house to now they're talking about, oh, I want to buy a rental property. They haven't bought either one and it's been eight years, you know? So it's like, you have to just take that step and just do it, just do it. And then learn how the process is. You get that experience, you understand it now. And the more you do it, the less risky it seems to you. And with all that being said, we're going to wrap it up right there and we'll see you in the next video. Please like, comment, share, and Hopefully people will get off their butts and get to work because the world ain't going to wait on you. And as you see, the government ain't going to bail everybody out. So have a good one. See you guys.